This is uh, Kasaragi et al. 2021. Uh, Moonstruck sleep, synchronization of human sleep with the moon cycle under field conditions. So um, may I have my screen back? Thank you. Um, I'll just read a little bit from the results. Consistent with previous studies, shorter sleep duration and a delayed onset, onset of sleep were associated with increased access to electric light. Moreover, both the duration and the time of sleep onset showed a clear modulation throughout the moon cycle that was evident in the whole population as well as in the individual communities. Now, this this paper was was interesting. And so, wait, wait, which communities did they study? So they were. I was just going to go back and look. They looked at indigenous. I'm going to mispronounce this. I'm sure Toba slash Com Q O M uh, communities in Argentina, uh, where they've got so these 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 peoples um, live. All in in all range of conditions, from sort of their original hunter gatherer like conditions to fully urban, and so they went and looked at if memory serves, and I I'm, I did not have enough time to look at either of these sleep papers I want to talk about today a little bit. Um, they looked at um, moon stage and um, sleep in the most like the original indigenous hunter gatherer people without light pollution right um, very little fully urbanized industrialized and then a sort of an intermediate stage that has some light pollution as well and so they've effectively controlled for a lot of stuff around culture right um, because it's all the same it's it's all the same lineage and they still even the industrialized people I think are still honoring some of their established um, uh, cultural norms, um, but what they found was uh, that uh, I mean exa exactly as you would expect if you if you've ever been backpacking or if you've ever thought about the fact that we are evolved human beings on this planet um, that we are queuing into the moon and that when we have electric lights that replace that effectively replace the cues that we get from the moon especially at night we are less we are sleeping less we are sleeping less well um, that absent electric lights this is this was something interesting I don't remember if this is from this article or if something that they referenced in this article, uh, that very rarely without electric lights do people, people often go to bed after dark and they may use fire, they may use moonlight. Um, they tend to go to bed later, the more full the moon is with a couple of interesting exceptions. Like apparently, I think it was the Hadza who actually have explicit nighttime um, festivities on new moon nights, interestingly. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> so, you know, there are going to be exceptions, but um, very rarely, if ever, do people, absent electric lights, rise before the sun rises? That going to bed after dark is common, but rising before the sun rises is not. And oh boy, mightn't that have something to do with how much more sleep deprived people feel in the winter months, and especially for teenagers having to get up early when it's still pitch dark out, rouse themselves from sleep when we know that this is a time of life when um, people need more sleep and um, and that you know, rousing them when it's still dark out and sending a signal um, that really until electric lights, no human beings were ever being sent might be disruptive, not just to sleep that day, but to sleep more broadly and probably to the developing brain as well. Okay. So I still missed something though. Okay. So there's some sort of synchrony with moon phase, mm -hmm. which I would expect, but what, how does it manifest? What is, is it when people go to bed? Is it how often they wake up when they're sleeping? What, what kind of thing? Um, so there's less, they sleep less. Um, when, oh, when it's oh, full. Oh, so, um, okay. So there's there's two comparisons that we're doing here. And I was mostly talking about the, the other one. So the... Um, sort of hunter-gatherer to industrialized. The more industrialized you are, the less in sync with the moon phase you are and the more disrupted your sure. sleep is. With regard to how does your sleep, if you are living without electric lights, how does your sleep change across the moon cycle? Um, people are tending to go to bed later uh, under full moon conditions and under a full moon sleeping less per night, but that that is a you know predictable, fairly even um curve over time. I've, I've always wondered about this because yeah. I have been kept up by the moon yeah. and it seems like we are very, <laughs> we are uh, yeah. well designed not to be kept up by uh, firelight, uh -huh. um, something we, you and I have talked about uh, a lot, but, um, and you know, for good reason, you, you would want it not to basically be informing your pineal gland of what time of day it is because mm -hmm. it's, it doesn't contain that information, mm -hmm. right? Um, but the fact that the moon, which is reflecting obviously sunlight, 
um, somehow does keep you up. If you're sleeping mm -hmm. in a circumstance where you can't block out moonlight, it's plenty to keep you up. Also, interestingly, uh, many years ago when I was doing bat research in Panama, um, I was, I can't remember exactly what I was doing, but I spent a night at the top of one of these canopy towers. I think I was waiting for, there were some uh, fruits maturing there and I was hoping to see fruit bats, which didn't work out, but nonetheless, um, oh, I, we should come back to why I might not have seen the fruit bats. It has to do with something called lunar phobia um, that exists in bats. But in any case, I discovered that I could read under moonlight. It was mm -hmm. just barely the right amount of light to read, uh, which is interesting. You know, any less, you know, just slightly less than full moon wouldn't be enough. Um, so I don't know if that's haphazard or not, but yeah. um, it's an interesting connection. That is an interesting connection. Um, and so just uh, an, another um, another paper that came out recently that I had, I was able to spend even less time with, so I'm just really going to read a couple of, of sections from it, is this um, Forster et al., and again, you can show my um, my screen here, Zach. Um, we show that women's, just the second half of the abstract, we show that women's menstrual cycles with a period longer than 27 days were intermittently synchronous with the moon's luminance and or gravimetric cycles. With age and upon exposure to artificial nocturnal light, menstrual cycles shortened and lost the synchrony. We hypothesize that in ancient times, human reproductive behavior was synchronous with the moon, but that our modern lifestyles have changed reproductive physiology and behavior. And I'm just going to read the very beginning of the introduction, too. In many marine species and some terrestrial species, reproductive behavior is synchronized with a particular phase of the lunar cycle, generally the full or the new moon. This arrangement increases reproductive success by synchronizing the reproductive behavior of the individual members of a species. In light of this fact, it is of interest that the human menstrual cycle has a period close to that of the lunar cycle and that several older studies report a relation between the cycles. Women whose cycles approach the 29 and a half day period of the moon have been reported to have the highest likelihood to become pregnant. So that is, you know, it's the very beginning of the article, but I'd never heard that before. That the closer the length of your cycle is to that of the moon, the more fecund you appear to be. Um, super interesting, but really, you know, not surprising at all that our sleep cycles for all human beings and that for uh, reproductively uh, women of reproductive age uh, menstrual cycles are attuned to the moon in some way is should not be surprising and to that end I got to these two articles by reading a This Week in Science short article um, which um, here Zach um, the final oh didn't like it. It didn't like it when I made it bigger. Okay. Well, okay, never mind. Um, the final sentence is, both studies stop short of establishing causality, but suggest that even in highly industrialized societies, celestial bodies affect our bodies on Earth. Yeah. You think? Uh, yeah, it's, pre it's pretty interesting. I do think the female menstrual cycle and the uh, lunar phases are tightly connected, but it does not require an actual effect of the moon itself. In other words, there is a mechanism oh, yeah. for the moon itself to to influence uh, women this way because they, you know, under ancestral circumstances would have, you know, been monitoring effectively the the moon phase. But I don't think it's accidental um, that uh, that close analogy. Anyway, maybe we'll... So, so um, yeah, we should definitely come back to this. But you are saying um, that, the, that the sleep work... Um, is of a different nature than the menstrual cycle work, and that the menstrual cycle work may be, in fact, about a way that the human uh, body has figured out to basically keep time. Yeah. Uh, keep time and awareness. Yeah, that's uh, keep time, keep a schedule, keep an internal schedule so that a woman effectively, you know, in a, in a species with very few external indicators of, um, of when we are at our most fecund, um, that if you can keep track of the moon and count to 29, um, then you can do a decent job of, um, of knowing when you're fertile. Uh, yes, and also knowing when you are pregnant, which may be the most important aspect of this, which is um, that, in effect, 
by if a woman's period has accompanied a particular phase of the moon upon reaching that phase of the moon if she is not near her next period then she is at least aware that there's something she has to pay attention to which then might have very uh, deep implications for her behavior because yes. um, raising a child alone is uh, vastly dicier than raising a child with a committed partner 